Okay, so today we are going to be discussing what we think are some of the best small electric cars out there at the moment. Small and cars. we are small cars, not quite that small. Um, but we're hopefully going to find a car that suits your needs. And if we do, it would be great to hear from you. So do let us know in the comments below if we manage to find the right one for you. Now, obviously, there will be no blathering. We will not chat around the subject. We just want to know whether you fancy an Aura cat. Well, oh, actually, it's called the Aura Funky Cat now. Something like a smart hashtag one, I don't know, a Citroen Ami or a Fiat 500. Let us know in the comments. Right, so this is quite a good, clear premise, which should be quite simple because yeah, now there is so much choice. We are absolutely mm -hmm. spoilt for choice. I mean, I remember when we literally had a choice of, I mean, two, I think. There was a long period where there were literally two EVs to choose from. the good old days when we used to have to recommend cars from a very long list of not that many cars. But I have an important question. Just want to clear this up before we go any further. What do we mean by small? Because some person's small is another person's too big. And, it, you know, mm. how big is big? I'm just going to step away from that analogy for the moment. Um, well, I think we are kind of just talking normal hatchbacks. Okay. Just to keep it nice and simple. Something that wouldn't make Wookiee wince if he was trying to parallel park it. I live in the countryside. It's not a skill I require. Hence why he's terrible at parallel parking. <clears throat> Terrible subjective. Big driveways. Anyway, yeah. um, I'm going to kick us off with a couple of old favourites. How about right. Fiat 500? Yes. Always very tick, nice. Tick, yeah, or... That was our electrifying car of the year. Was that 2020? 2020 or yes. 2021? Can't 2020. remember. But it was the electrifying car of the year. Brilliant little car. Um, then there's a pair of twins. The Peugeot E208 or the Vauxhall Corsa Electric. That was formerly known as the Corsa E, but it sort of changed its name. Um, to be a little bit more jazzy. Um, they're decent little cars, all of those. Uh, but one thing you do need to be aware of, you know the Fiat 500, you tested it, I think. The one I with did. the smaller battery, yeah. the cheapest one, you can't buy that at the moment. It's gone off the price lists. Which actually isn't a disaster because it had such a low range. I think it was under 100 miles. It was 99 it, miles. Very which much a city is car. Very, yeah. Very much a city car. Can't drive it very far. So actually, it's not the end of the world, I don't think. Go for the bigger Certainly. battery version. Exactly. Now, we've also got, which I really like, the Peugeot E208. Um, and also, that has had a slight range increase. I think yes, about 24 extra miles. Which yes, is it has. Over 10%. Not much, but every little bit counts, doesn't it? Yeah. There is also, which I test drove, the Vauxhall Mocha Electric. You liked that more than I did. I did like that, particularly in that, it was in that bright green, wasn't it? Like the Kermit the Frog green. Yeah, you know green. they change the colour. You have to test the car, not the colour. Oh, yeah, but I just quite like it. And I keep seeing it around in the Kermit the Frog green, so therefore, it's good. people must like it. How does that work? Um, but it's not massive in size, so I would say it fits yeah. into our yeah. Still small works. Still works. Um, EV range. And, of course, we've also got the Peugeot E2008, which was very nice. Much more attractive car to me. It's slightly bigger, uh, better looking, and it's got the same drivetrain and battery and stuff. So it's not got the most range, but actually works really well. I quite like that. What I think you will also like is mm -hmm. there is a new Jeep coming based on the same bits called the Avenger. Sounds and it looks cool. like a super. It does look it pretty cool. good, to be fair. And it's a proven drivetrain. So we know what we're going to get, which is great. Um, I've got to do a couple of honourable mentions. So first of all, Renault Zoe is still a good car, mm. still big range. You can still get decent deals, but it's ha you know the safety score, the mm. Euro NCAP thing, that's recently been reduced because it doesn't have some of the systems on it that modern cars have. So that might make you think twice. Which is such a shame, isn't it? I'm it surprised is. that Renault didn't see that coming. It was overlooked. I think it sort of took them by surprise. But they wanted to get the Megane E-Tech to be their new shiny thing. So the Zoe, even though it's smaller, and the Megane E-Tech isn't as big as you think. I think they were putting a lot of concentration on that particular car. Is that safety, the end cap safety issue, something that would stop you from buying it? Not me. I think a lot of the safety stuff on Euro end cap is down to having advanced driver assistance systems. So if it hasn't got, you know, emergency or collision mitigation braking software and all that kind of stuff, that doesn't bother me so much. But it does. Modern cars do have it, and it makes it have a, a less impressive score. So. Um, Another one, which we've always talked about, Nissan Leaf, slightly, is that too big, do you think? I don't think so. No. I mean, I think, yeah, exactly. I think generally cars are just getting bigger, aren't they? So, it's yeah. Still, it's not an SUV, basically. So, uh, Nissan Leaf's still out there, still some really good deals. Slightly feeling maybe a bit long in the tooth. What? Possibly. But yeah, still a great car. Now, the other great car, maybe a little bit overpriced, is the Honda E, our Panda car. The I car that smiles at you when it goes out onto the streets. Um, 
perhaps I think the range is a little low for the money that you're paying. It's a lot of money. Yeah, it is quite expensive. Um, um, there are lots of other options. Once you're into that kind of price bracket, I there still are think lots I'd of have other a mini. decent I'd still cars out there. With that kind of range, because I think it depends what age you are. You know, if you're like young and you've got a bit of cash to spend, the Honda E is really fun. The Mini has been around a long time. Yeah. That's something that I love my mum, but my mum drives. Like, you know, you, you are becoming your mum. You do. I know, that. I know. You yeah, are. just because I've celebrated another quickly. birthday. All right, thank you very much. Moving on. Uh, <laughs> um, uh, but um, yeah, I think if you want something like young, cool, and trendy, which is why Ricky. Doesn't like it. I mean, this is just a character assassination <laughs> at this point. Day. The thing is, there's a new Mini coming, so there'll be a new Mini Electric. But if you can't wait for that, then there's a car that's based on the same bits mm. underneath called the Auracat. Now, yeah, it was called cool. the Auracat. This is cool. But it's not called the Auracat anymore. It's now called the Aura <laughs> Funky Cat. Disaster. And Why did they change the name? Well, it's funny because in China, where this car comes from, yes. Aura which is made by Great Wall Motors and BMW as a kind of 50-50 co-production, has the black cat, the white cat, the funky cat. The funky cat is called the good cat in China. And it's also got the lightning cat, which is a four-deal saloon. Which now, that would have made to. much more sense. The I just lightning think it's really cat, funny. you know, lightning electrifying committed and committed to feline names and they're just running with it. Um, let's look at some of the facts and figures because it has a 48 kilowatt hour battery. Yep. Not bad. Yep. 63 kilowatt DC charging. Terrible. That's really bad. <laughs> I mean... No, it's it not is. really bad. Well, VWs not... are running at 120. All right, fine. Twice fair as fair enough. Fair, quite, fair quite enough. a lot better. Um, and the range 193 WLTP. It's okay. Fine. It's more than fine. the minis and the But it's quite the... cheap. Just under 32 grand. So you think that's cheap? I don't think that's cheap. <laughs> well, Do you not think that's expensive for what you get? Because don't forget, it's only but it a little looks... bit bigger than the mini. Yeah, but it's not the mini. And it's supposed mm. to be like a premium version of, maybe. I kind of wish that was cheaper. Okay, now it is time for some of our all-time faves. The Chocolate classics. Cake. Well, yeah, that is yeah, my okay, favorite, yeah, okay, yeah. yeah. But we're not talking about food right now. We're talking about small electric cars. Have yes, you not got are. the brief, Wookie? Yes, we are, yes, we are. And, well, one of my favorites has to be the MG4. You do like that car. I love it, and, and it's such good value. Yeah, it's really so good. So there we are. I do like cars that are good value. Anyway. The great thing is, it's it's not tiny outside. It's quite a good size. No. Um, it's stylish. It looks cool. It looks sporty. Uh, it is obviously a hatchback, um, and I think it makes a lot more financial sense for the kit and performance. Yeah, I do think that's a really good value car. Uh, same goes for one of my favourites, which is the Megane um, E Tech Electric, the Renault. Oh. So I nice. like it because it feels light. It's yeah. nice to drive. I know it's not the cheapest car, but. In Renault going for that, taking a little bit of time, making mm. sure the car was right and that it drives really nicely and it's efficient because it's light. I, I really liked it. So people think it's massive and actually when you see it in pictures, it looks like an SUV. Mm. Stick it on the road. It's actually quite short. It's only 140 centimetres uh, longer than a Corsa. Do you mean 114 millimetres? Move on. 140 centimetres. That's 1.4 metres. So you've got, uh, do you want anything else? Anyway, uh, I actually do also really like smart. Hashtag one. That's an interesting, I've driven that car quite a lot now. I haven't driven it, mm. but I think it looks really cool. And it sounded really cool from when you drove it. It is. Um, I know it's not tiny, no. but it's not exactly a bus either. No. Again, it's kind of that mid-size small EV. There's a lot to recommend with it and it looks cool too. Yeah, it does actually. It, it look, you know, like when you look at an iPhone and it looks designed, but it's not got loads of things on it. Mm. It's a bit like that. I mean, it, it could be a little bit bland, but I think it won't date. So there's a... And value? It's still a little bit spenny, if I'm honest. There's a, there's a, you can spend a lot of money on it, but there's a Brabus version that's like four wheel drive and 400 horsepower, and that's really amusing. It's a bit silly, but we like a bit silly. We like silly. fun cars. The other thing that we haven't mentioned yet is our favorite. The Citroen Ami, the cutest little cars ever. Well, I guess it's kind of Ginny's it's favorite. Ginny, it's definitely Ginny's right. favorite. Because she, I cause she shared a cup of tea with the Ami actually in, in this here, barn. We managed there, to get the fact. car in the barn, which was remarkable. But I think it demonstrates how small is it. Is it even a car? The thing is, it's <laughs> just a city car, isn't it? You, I live in the wilds of Lincolnshire and it just wouldn't work for me. I think in town, it's yeah. a really nice alternative to a bus or a tube. Yeah, but I'm not sure I'd work. even use it as a city car. But. Would you not? Would you not just use it if it was raining? You'd, no? Probably would just... It's because you've got a chauffeur. I mean, it doesn't really. 
If it was raining, I either wouldn't go out, I would get an Uber, or I'd drive myself in my big car. <laughs> wow, she's got so many cars. Anyway, I suppose we have to mention <laughs> stuff from the VW group. So honestly, um, if you're gonna talk about things like ID3, that's small enough, isn't it, right? Um, there are long waiting lists for ID3s, and to be honest, I don't really like them inside. I don't think they're as well built as they should be. So I'd go and get a Cupra Born, which is the car they're making now instead of ID3s. So you don't wait as long and it's a better car. You and just prefer the kind of sporty No, car, I no. genuinely think it's better built. It's got a nicer interior, it looks better, and you can get one. That's pretty much a smackdown over the ID3. I mean, it helps that you can actually get one. That's pretty that fundamental is a big deal. to yeah, when yeah. you are buying a car. Um, now, also, I really like the high-end Icona Electric and the yes. Kia Soul EV. Still around and that still good. definitely deserves a mention because that was, again, one of the first sort of, well, maybe not one of the first. Well, it was, and they were the options that we always re recommended back in the day, weren't they? They were really good. They had good battery tech. They were efficient. We liked them. And, and a good range. There. And a good range. And, and they're still They here. were one of the first to actually get a decent range. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and there's also been that refresh for the Soul, New which has been year. really nice. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. The only downside is the price. It has crept up a little bit. So it's got, it's not off. too bad, but yes, it has gone up. Um, God, that's quite a lot, really, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, talk about choice. Well, we we never used to have any. Things really are looking up in terms of choice, aren't they? There's quite a lot of choice there for small cars now, and they're all pure electric. So there you have it. That is a quick summary of what we think are the best. Um, do let us know in the comments below. Are we right? Are we wrong? Have we forgotten the best one out there? Just ignore him. Um, and in the meantime, thank you so much for watching. Do subscribe and keep watching electrifying.com.